Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Prime Minister. What is the total dollar value of all of the expenses reimbursed, fees paid to, and any other any other consideration provided by the WE group to you, your mother, your spouse, your brother, and any other member of your family? Just the total, please. Minister. All right, mute. Uh I don't have that exact figure. Uh, that uh, reimbursing expenses is something done by an organization, uh, for example. So I don't have uh, those totals. Well, that is a clip from a, a spicy exchange between Pierre Polyev, the Conservative MP. Frankly, I wish Pierre was running for Conservative leader right now, and Justin Trudeau, who is mired in yet another ethical scandal rewarding his friends who reward his family. Oh, it's cozy in there, isn't it? Well, Trudeau appeared by video conference to a parliamentary committee for about 90 minutes. Uh, I think he managed to avoid uh, disastrous torpedoing simply because I think the Canadian media is used to his sly oleaginous answers. He just sort of slips away. He manages to put himself as a third person observing things with you. Oh yes, I was disappointed. Oh yes, we have so much we can learn. And there were some liberal MPs chiming in uh, to his defense. It was quite infuriating, but you know what? I think people know we've got a crook as a prime minister. Uh, joining me now to talk about the we charitable scandals as well as Trudeau's appearance via video conference in these committee proceedings. And if it's getting through to severely normal Canadians on the street, is our favorite lawyer, commentator, pundit friend, Manny Montenegrino, CEO of Think Sharp, who joins us now via Ottawa, uh, via Skype. Manny, great to see you again. Thanks for being back on the show. No problem. Just love, love helping out and love being part of your, uh, your broadcast. Manny, what I like is that you sort of step back, look at things in context and bring in other threads, other ideas. And you've had a couple of days now to ruminate on uh, Trudeau's hearing. What is your takeaway? Well, Ezra, um, it, 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 you know, you said it bothers you, it infuriates you, and it should every Canadian. And the media completely forgets the past. And that's where I start. Every case you got to get all the facts. So I went back to the mandate letters. And as your viewers are know, the Prime Minister of Canada writes a mandate letter for every minister. This is what you're going to do. And that's their task for the period of the term of Parliament. And each minister gets a mandate letter. Now, the media in 2015 applauded Trudeau for making these mandate letters public. They were always private. They were between the prime minister and the minister, but he made them public. What an openness, and, and the media applauded it. But they don't go back to them mm -hmm. to see what were the duties. Well, I did. Mm -hmm. And the, each mandate letter, Ezra, specifically refers to the Conflict of Interest Act. The finance minister's mandate, mandate letter says you must read it read every part, adhere to every part of the act, and you must conduct yourself accordingly. And then it goes far farther. In the mandate letter, it says, now, look, we just don't want you to observe the law. That's the minimum standard. I want you, says the prime minister to the finance minister, to have the highest ethical standards. So read the act and have the highest ethical standards. And this is found in every mandate letter. So that tells you a few things. Number one, the prime minister at least understood the act, the importance of the act, and made it part of his dictate to every minister. Mm -hmm. So he must know about that. Mm -hmm. So we start there. Now, let's go to the previous investigations. And, and there have been three. This will be Trudeau the third investigation. Right. Well, let, let's take us to Trudeau the first. That was the Aga Khan. Mm -hmm. Now, some people don't know. There were, there were, there were actually two cases rolled up into one because there were two separate trips that he took from the Aga Khan. And what, what I take out of that, now these are 74 page legal decisions that everyone puts no weight to. Well, you know, a judge wrote a decision and we don't really care because it doesn't politically serve Trudeau, but it's a very damning report. And here's how damning it was. I mean, there were two vacations, probably in the order of $400,000 of free trips. 
But what came out of that was an interesting finding by the judge that Trudeau lied mm -hmm. or Trudeau was not credible when he said the Aga Khan was his friend. Now, Ezra, let's bring that forward to today. Now, the, the commissioner said, Prime Minister, you are not telling me the truth. I will not accept your evidence because you haven't seen the Aga Khan for 30 some years. Mm -hmm. How could you claim to be your friend? Mm -hmm. now, now, he forgets that. The mm -hmm. media forgets mm -hmm. that. I don't. And here's now fast forward to the Kilbergs. Here he has his mom at least on 20, 30 occasions uh, speaking with them, his brother, his wife. Just recently, I, I, a few months ago, his wife flew back and got very uh, hefty expenses paid for her. Uh, and Trudeau, I see many times he's hugging and he's at weak conventions. Now, if I use Trudeau's own standard, and that is, is he a friend in the order of Aga Khan? The answer is absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, so so here he calls the Aga Khan a friend, and right. he calls the Kilbergs. Oh, I I don't know. They're kind of associates. <laughs> there is there is a thousand points more connection with the Kilbergs mm -hmm. than there was Aga Khan. But in his own evidence, he said the Aga Khan was a friend. Right. Well, if the Aga Khan was a friend, Kilbergs are. Boozum BBFs, if yeah. you want to put it, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. So, 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 then you go to the investigation, the, the second Trudeau. There's another lengthy legal decision. Now, there we learned a couple things. He did obstruct justice. He did found and breach again under the Conflict Act, but also that he obstructed the investigator. He obstructed the, the commissioner who was looking into it by not having everyone at the PMO speak. So we, so we now have a broader picture. And the broad picture is you have to come to the conclusion that this person has no credibility. This person has been found. I don't know if there's any court in the world or any adjudicator that found a sitting leader, a prime minister or a president, whoever, as a person who cannot be credible. Mm -hmm. So, so, so now you take all that information and you bring it to today. And I find, you know, as I watched, I think about the first 10, 15 minutes and, I, you know, probably under doctor's order, I can't really listen to <laughs> Justin Trudeau. I know he's got that tone of voice and he just looks well, at you and he's, it's like you're in he's a dra high school drama teacher again. Well, that plus more importantly to me. He insults my intelligence and he insults every Canadian's intelligence. And let me parse out one thing. Like it is, and no one has mentioned this, and it's just, it's absurd, but he thinks he can get away with it. And here, he starts and he says, I first heard of this on May 8th, and I pushed it back. And I said to the bureaucrats, look at this carefully, because I am associated with these people. I want you to do greater due diligence. That's how good I am, right? He's po posing as the hero of the story. He's right. Just, and, as if he wasn't intimately involved with it. And that, no, but he actually said, I said to send it back. Now, not one media looked at Section 21 of the Conflict of Interest Act. It basically says it prohibits any public officer, certainly the prime minister, from any debate, discussion, or decision. So when it came up on May 8th, Trudeau should have said, oh, I can't even send it back. I can't even listen right. about this. Right. So so the fool, I, I apologize, <laughs> <laughs> but the accused or the recidivist actually admitted to a second breach of Section 21. He breached Section 21 when he should have just clapped his hands and said, what's this? The Kilbergs? We? I'm out. I don't even want to hear anything. I'm out of the room. Guys, you take care of it. Not that I'm sending it back because I'm noble, because once you seize yourself of this file, you have breached the law. Yeah. That's what recusal means. And then it comes back to him again after the due diligence, and God knows what due diligence, that the issue of recusal has nothing to do with the poor bureaucrats. I mean, they can't do anything about it. All they can do is look at the file and, and send it back forward. Yeah. So then Trudeau gets it again the second time, 
And he, this time, he doesn't debate it, doesn't discuss it. He actually makes a decision and approves it with cabinet. So it's a second violation. Now, you know, Ezra, the, the, I've counted the, the Conflict of Interest Act has many sections. To date, and, and I use this as a joke, and I was on the golf course today, and I, and I said to a friend, what does Justin Trudeau and Tiger Woods have in common? And I said, no, 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 don't go there. Something different. And I said, they both have 15 majors. Tiger Woods has fit, won 15 majors. Trudeau has 15 major breaches of the Conflict of Interest Act. And I've already caught two or three on this one here alone. So, so how does he stand there proudly and say, oh, look, I saw this on May 8th, and I direct... He basically said he directed that whole file, which is specifically prohibited under Section 21. And then a month or two weeks later, he votes on it. So he's got two ethical violations yeah. on one act. Hmm. You know, could I read a, a tweet from Andrew Coyne, who was talking about the May 8th date? And let me just read this, because I think he's on point. He says, so we, the charity, was talking to various cabinet ministers in early April. PMO officials were talking to we a handful of times after that. The program was offered to them on April 22nd. We began work on it on May 5th, but no one breathed a word of it to either the prime minister or his chief of staff until May 8th. I mean, yeah, no. and yeah. that whole fact was not mentioned by anyone until Trudeau's testimony. They are counting on media either being gullible or lazy or not connecting the dots or just to in the tank that, I mean, Andrew Coyne summed up a fact pattern that is simply not believable, that all well, this activity yeah. was done before anyone mentioned it to the chief of staff. Forget the prime minister. You, the chief of staff didn't know this, really? You just went ahead with a half billion dollar program. Chief of staff didn't know? Yeah, no, there's no question that what he's not is, is saying is not truthful. There's no question that an adjudicator already found him not to be a truthful person. Yeah. So, and now, I mean, if you think of the, what he's saying, he's actually saying in his defense of being noble, I breached Section 21 on May 8th because I wanted it further reviewed. Like, that is just absurd. This is like, like, like it goes beyond, beyond any legal grasp. If there was a, a judge on this, and he will be, the, 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 the commissioner will found another, uh, you know, 80-page report saying that he's done this wrong. I mean, but the, but, but there, there's, they miss that point. And then he goes on to, and it really, Ezra, I, 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 I'm lost. Hmm. He goes on to his explanation that he's got a, you know, the media, the CBC, and, uh, you know, I love watching CBC because I, I just, they work so hard to protect. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I protected my clients you know, vigorously. Yeah. And, and they do a better job protecting yeah. Trudeau than I ever yeah. have, and I thought I was one of them. <laughs> they best. earn their but, money. They earn uh, their but, money, but, Manny. But they, they, they say... They say he's got a blind spot. Now, let's, again, go back to the totality of it. This is a guy who explained and the people accepted the explanation for his racist and admitted racist acts of multiple black faces because of his white privilege. Mm -hmm. And everyone seemed to accept that. And I, I OK, fine, I don't. Uh, that's, in fact, what racism is, is white privilege. He should be gone. But now he's using the same explanation, the same rationale for his continual 13 breaches of the Conflict of Interest Act. Yeah. And we're talking about gifts. We're talking about $400,000 vacations. Yeah. We're talking about mom getting two, three, four hundred thousand. Yeah. My brother, Sophie's, you know, I mean, listen, yeah. I'd like to go to London and somebody pick up my tab for a $2,000 hotel. Yeah. I mean, well, the, those are expenses. Well, no, it's, it's living large. Yeah. I mean, that's oh, a, that's I a, mean, it's London has some of the most expensive hotels in the world, or you can stay on the cheap um, to say she didn't take a fee, but, but lived like a princess, literally in the royal suite, um, that's tantamount to being paid, and then some. It was a gorgeous vacation. You yeah, know, sure. It, it's, you know, it's funny to say he's got a blind spot. Um, that implies he wasn't looking, wasn't choosing, wasn't attentive. He knew exactly what was going on, 
And as you point out, this is his third time uh, where he's been caught in it. It's not, oh, well, guys, sorry, I just, I just accidentally uh, approved this half billion dollar grant, or is it a billion? To, I mean, you know, when he said he didn't know what hotel his wife was staying at in London, she's gone a big oh, trip no, with on. the kids, with come his on. mom. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. I don't no, believe no, it. Uh, you have to work for the CBC to believe that kind of thing. And you have to, to believe that he has a blind spot. This is a person, like, Ezra, it, 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 like, it, there's another CBC point that he actually went to committee. Now, Ezra, you know, I practiced law 34 years, and, and I've learned a few things about a few certain types of people. Um, the type of people that go under oath to be cross-examined when they are, I'll say a recidivist, this is his 13th charge, his second large decision, and to sit there and say, I want to speak, and then openly lie yeah. and say that, that I sent it back. Well, that's an admission yeah. that you broke the law again. Yeah. People that do that, and I've had very rare cases, but the clients that take the stand are those that are have a, kind of a narcissist uh, 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 personality, a psychopathic personality. They, they believe that no matter how insane what they say, people will accept it because yeah. they are above everybody. Yeah. And and so I, I don't I don't take great pleasure that he took the, the, the went under oath. I mean I you know you could go through that and certainly if this was in in, in America and uh, the FBI there'd probably be a few charges of uh, uh, of um, uh, breach under the oath and, and perjury. Uh, but if you go through his whole testimony there are just bold faced lies. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know why he would stand up and admit that he failed to recuse twice. Yeah. Um, um, but but uh, there he did it. I think there's the narcissism of thinking people will believe him no matter what he says. But there's also the mental reservation, the moral reservation that if he did anything wrong, he's so noble, just he makes it right. So uh, that he doesn't have to feel guilty about anything because he's actually more morally he burns more brightly than any law. So if any law, if he breaks any law, that law ought not to have been applied to him in the first place. I think when you live your entire life as a young prince, uh, your dad's money, your dad's name, doors open for you, someone always cleans up the mess, that's not a good person to put into a position that demands accountability like a PM. Last question to you, Manny. Do you think he'll survive this one as easily as he survived the first two? Is there any reason to think that this will be any different from the last two uh, ethics breaches and there'll be some harumphing in the press gallery and three months from now no one will even remember? Well, uh, uh, gladly there is a cumulative effect. I don't think he should have survived the first. Um, the whole concept of being above the law, that is why these laws are there. They're there. That law was specifically there to make sure the public office holders don't go up, see themselves above the law with their power. So, and, and clearly, Justin Trudeau, we're talking, you know, there will be 15 to 17 different findings and violations of various sections on facts that lead to six, four different types of circumstances. So four different cases, three different reviews, 17 different findings of guilt. I mean, this is beyond, this isn't just one mistake. This is a pattern of life. And again, you go back to the blackface. And he, I mean, I've never heard of anyone doing one blackface, but to do it when you, he was asked how many times, I can't remember. This is a person that goes past beyond any reasonable person's uh, review of of normality and and conduct. And he is, I mean, to sit there and say, I didn't recuse myself because I failed to recuse myself to send it to the Bearcats because I didn't recuse myself. It's like, it's like, it's, it's absurd. And, and I shake my head. I can't see why everybody doesn't see it. It's very simple. Something that touches your family, you get up, you leave the room. Yeah. Everyone gets it. Everyone gets it. Yeah. Well, it's uh, no surprise to Rebel viewers that this is how Trudeau is. 
We've been calling it since the beginning. Hopefully other Canadians will see it. Manny, what a pleasure, as always, to learn so much from you. Your political eye, your legal eye, you find things that other people miss. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Ezra. Take care. Right on. There you have it. Manny Montenegrino, the CEO of Think Sharp. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.